Oh my God, you cannot believe what had happened. I had been cleaning blood on the walls, on the floor, in the bed. I had been cleaning blood and all this mess all morning and painting over the walls all afternoon. And it's a, definitely a horror story. I'm gonna tell you about uh, this bloody case later on in the end of the video, but this video is related to that. I wanna talk about having passive income as an artist, as a creative professional, so you could have more time for your art. Because most of the artists, when they started off, they are struggling to maintain a healthy cash flow. So they have to work nine to five or on different side hassles so they could have the money to pay the rent, to cover the basic cost of living, so they could have the money for their art, but then they don't have the time. So it's always about finding the balance between money and time as a creative professional. And that's why having passive income or different passive income streams is a really, really uh, positive thing so that you could have the money so you don't have to sell your hours to your employer to get the money to buy your time. I mean, it's kind of paradox. It doesn't make sense, right? So the best way is to have passive incomes. And of course, when people think about passive incomes, people normally think about, it's like money coming in, you just lay on the beach, and this money is like flowing in like overwhelmingly. It's not really like that. I wanna talk about from my own experience, how does it look like? Um, living off passive income as a creative entrepreneur and different pros and cons and different kind of passive income strategies so that I hope my story can help you decide if this is something you would like to do, or what kind of passive income strategies you would like to take. Since 2013, I had this idea to live on my passive income so that I could say I will not sell my hours anymore and I could have more freedom and to embark on a career in the creative industry to do the projects I wanna do. And it had always been something I would like to do, to run art projects and to do something creative. Although I was working as a photographer, as a multimedia technician, and it was somehow already very creative, but it was not enough for me and I crave for more creative freedom, for more artistic freedom. So I decided to start saving money to purchase properties and then uh, flip the houses and then rent it out for money. And this is something I had been doing since 2013. And it took me around three to five years to finally to be able to say that I could live fully from my passive income streams and it took some time because I had to save money and work full time so that I could have the down payment for the first house. The second year I could have the second house. And then um, slowly, slowly I was growing my portfolio. Last year in the summer, in a good month in August, I could get more than 7,300 euro for that month. And in a bad month, I could perhaps only get half of what I make in the good month. But it's like this, it's seasonal in the Mediterranean Sea. I have no complaints when I got the properties, I knew it's like this. So I had my kind of strategies to rent out in the summer to tourists and in the winter to students. Of course, besides properties, you could have different kind of passive incomes. And if you search on the internet, there are a lot of ideas, um, but usually there are three different kinds, the properties, intellectual properties, and financial markets. As an artist, the first thing you would eliminate is financial markets because you don't wanna to have to look at the stock markets every single day, almost every hour, so that you could buy and sell and to make money. And it's kind of risky if you don't know, if you're not very much informed and educated about this financial market thing, you could lose money. And it's it kind of defeated the purpose of having money, making money for you so you can focus on your art. Finally, you would focus on the financial market and you would have not the time to work on your art projects. Then intellectual property is great as artist. It's really the best thing can happen to you if you have great intellectual properties and you just lay down and you sell your books, your novel, your movie, and then money is coming in. But the problem is like nowadays with entertainment, with art, with books, uh, all this sort of intellectual property rights, there is a life cycle. Like it goes well, it sells well, and then like it drops because it's not training anymore. And then you need to really push out for the second book. And finally, you are not that passive and you're always like trying to maintain a certain kind of lifestyle, meet your goals with your passive income. And it's not that stable because can you say that you only write a book for the next 15 to 20 years, you can live off that book? I don't think so. But with properties, you could. 
you could have a really good uh, real estate a piece of perhaps real estate like a house or apartment in a good location and you can say okay I rent it out for the next 10, 15, 20 years and you could live off that. Depending where you live, if you are living in a city, normally apartment would uh, take someone's half of their salary, then you only need two pieces of property to be able to make someone's full salary. That means you are having one person's salary coming to your bank account every month without spending the hours, without going to your offices. Like, of course, you have to check on your tenant once in a while just to make sure that everything's okay. If you don't have enough money to purchase a really good property that would meet someone's half of their salary, you can buy some cheaper properties like what I did. I bought really cheap ones and flipped them. And then it could be perhaps cheaper in rent and it could be someone's one third of their salaries. And then you can say, okay, I have three pieces of property over a certain amount of time. And then I would still in the end of this year, so I would have someone's salary and then I don't have to work anymore. Then if this is something that sounds good to you, then yeah, it's um, something really positive so you can have more time for your art. Now I wanna talk about some kind of um, cons, not only the positive side, but also the disadvantages of having properties. Obviously it's very material heavy. So if you're not really good at dealing with material things like a broken roof, a leaking pipe, and all this brick and mortar things. I mean, as an artist, I'm sure unless you're a digital artist, you should be pretty good with that because you have to be good with your hands, you know, work on some paintings and perhaps smoothing out the wall, doing some kind of sculpture. It's like brick and mortar work. It wouldn't be a problem for you. And that's why I recommended uh, having properties because at least you'll be able to do this minimal handy work on your own and you don't have to spend on maintenance teams if you don't have the money. So if you are not good with brick and mortar problems, avoid properties because they are very heavy in material things. Yesterday, one of the tenants had a terrible fight with his girlfriend and the girlfriend broke his nose and beat him up with blood everywhere. Blood was shooting on the ceiling. It was bleeding over the floor. It was in this kitchen, in the corridor, it was everywhere. Three police cars came, detained the girl, and then later two policemen came, detained the boy. Now they are both in the police station and they are waiting for their hearings. And I had contacted uh, their friend and then I had uh, cleaned out all their stuff because so uh, as the agreement goes, the contract terminates today and I had to clean off the blood on the walls and paint it over all afternoon. It was a uh, very stressful, terrible, but it's like this. When you have properties, you will have to deal with things because you're the owner and you have this responsibility and you could be confronted with many things happening in the house. And if you're not ready to do that, Perhaps this is not something you'd like to do. If you want, just go with a backpack, minimalist style, travel the world, not to worry about anything at all, then perhaps writing a book is better for you and selling the book and living off these royalties from the book could be a better option for you as an artist. It's up to you. So this is just my input. So perhaps you can have a glimpse of how is life looking like living from passive income from properties. I hope it's helpful for you. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. I will get back to you. And now I will just catch some sleep. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.